Hello, in this lesson we'll be discussing tissues and supporting system. And by the end of the lesson, I expect you to have an understanding of skeletal, skeleton and supporting systems in animals, the types of skeleton in animals, and supporting tissues in plants. After that, we'll be treating some questions from Wayek and Jam, and also giving you some advice for you on how to tackle such questions in the examination. See you as we move on. Now, let's discuss skeletal system or supporting systems in animals. The skeleton is a structure that supports and holds the living organism or an animal, as we, as we were discussing, in shape and enables it to move. Now, what are the biological significance of skeleton? Why do, living of the, why do animals have skeleton? The first one is for support. Without a skeleton, a human being or any animal will collapse and die. Another reason is for movement. The skeleton enables animals to move from place to place. Because as we said, animals move from place to place. Another thing skeleton does is that it protects the fragile parts of the animal. For instance, in mammals, the skull protects the brain, which is fragile and highly sensitive. Also, the ribs protect our heart and lungs. Without this, all our organs are at risk. So these are the significance of skeleton in an animal. Now we're talking about skeletal materials, the materials that make up the skeleton. And there are three major materials that make up skeleton in animals. That's the bone, the cartilage, and the chitin, or what is known as cortical. Now, the bone and the cartilage are found in higher animals, or what are known as vertebrates, while cortical is found in lower animals especially the insects and other lower animals as we go down the list. The bone is majorly the hard part of the skeleton in higher animals, while the cartilage is a softer part that helps to cushion the friction in the bone. And we'll get back to that as we continue the lesson. Now, there are three types of skeleton. The exoskeleton, the endoskeleton and the hydrostatic skeleton. The exoskeleton is more like an armor that covers the animals that have them. And they are majorly low animals like the arthropods, that the insects, the crustaceans like our scorpion, the centipede and so on. This exoskeleton is made of that material which we know as chitin or cortical, which is a proteinous material, a mucinogenous material that covers this animal. It enables it to move and it also protects the inside of the animal. These animals have soft insides and just this thick covering on the outside, which we know as the exoskeleton. Secondly, we have the endoskeleton. Now, endoskeleton is the skeleton within the animal. For instance, the skeletal system of mammal and all vertebrates is endoskeleton. You can't physically see any covering, but you know that there is a support system within those animals, which is known as the endoskeleton. Now, this endoskeleton consists of the vertebral column or the bones, and then the cartilage. Thirdly, we have the hydrostatic skeleton. Hydrostatic skeleton is basically skeleton made of water or liquid. This is the kind of skeleton we find in the annelids, like our earthworm or tapeworm, of all our roundworms. What happens in hydrostatic skeleton is that these are liquid that are kept under high pressure. Now, this high pressure prevents injury to the inner tissues within the animal. 
Anyway, you should know that since it's a liquid medium, it can be as protective as either the endoskeleton or the exoskeleton. Now we'll be going to the bones of the vertebra column. I want you to first of all note that animals that can have a vertebral column are known as vertebrates, or they fall under the subphylum vertebrata. The vertebrates have the skull, the vertebral column, and the appendicular bones. And this vertebral column is very, very important to the survival and the support of large animals because it contains the spinal cord within it and this spinal cord transmits information that is needed for the movement of the body in other words an animal without that has a, a spinal cord that is not protected by the vertebral column is most likely to be paralyzed and that is the importance of the vertebral column now this vertebral column is divided into regions the first region is known as the cervical column or cervical vertebra and that is the region within the neck that is the neck region then we have what is known as the thoracic vertebra or the thoracic column that is the one within the chest region that protects the lungs the heart and so on then we have the lumbar vertebra that is the the, vert the called the vertebra of the higher abdomen then we have the sacral vertebra the vertebra of the lower abdomen and finally we have the caudal vertebra or the vertebra of the tail region now this divides you know, the vertebra column into different regions they have their different features and they also have their different number of bones between them like I said earlier the spinal cord is continuous and passes from the cervical column down to the lumbar vertebra or the sacral vertebra. Next, we'll talk about the appendicular skeleton. Now, appendicular skeleton talks about the appendages or the arms and legs, the forelimbs and the hind limbs. Discussing supporting systems in plants. There are basically five tissues that aid in the supporting system of a plant, and they include the parenchyma, the colenchyma, the sclerenchyma, the xylem, and the phloem tissues. Each of these tissues work hand in hand to provide support and also do other functions. In helping the plants to perform its duties. And we'll be dealing with the parenchyma. The parenchyma is located in the cortex of the stem, it's located also in phloem, it's located in the root, the leaf, and the storage tissues of the plant. And what is the structure? It consists of cells with large vacuoles. We've discussed about vacuoles and a relatively thin cell wall. You know what a cell wall is by this time. And then it also contains cellulose. The parenchyma contains cellulose and it has hair spaces within it. And I want you to note that parenchyma is the most common supporting tissue in a plant. Up next is Cholenchyma. Now, the cholenchyma is located in the cortex of the stems, the roots, and the hypodermis of the leaf, that is beneath the epidermis. The structure is very simple. It, is, it contains living elongated cells, as long cells, with thickened cell walls, with thickened walls at the corner. Now, one thing you should know about the colenchyma is that the cells are flexible and they allow the bending and the twisting of stem. 
And one of the functions of the kolenkama is that it gives strength to the plant. As you should know, the kolenkama gives rigidity to the plant and is functional in turgidity. Once when water enters the perenchyma, it gives the plant that turgid outlook. Up next, we'll be talking about this clarenchyma tissue. One thing to know about clarenchyma tissue is that it is located in the pericycle of the vascular tissues. These vascular tissues include the xylem and the phloem. And it is also contained, it's also, it's also found in the cortex of the stem. Now, what is the structure of this clarenchyma? It contains cells with thickened wall. And one thing you should note about this clarenchyma is that it contains lignin. Lignin is more like dead plant cells. And then it also contains cellulose. And there are two types of clarenchyma. We have the fiber and the sclerites. Now, the fibers are elongated, while the sclerites are non-elongated. The function of the sclerenchyma is that they give flexibility to the plant, especially because of the fibers. And also, they give strength, rigidity, and hardness to the plants. And then we have the xylem. And xylem has another name, which is known as wood. So, most of the wood you find in the market is actually composed of xylem tissues. Now, where is xylem tissue located? It's located in the vascular tubules of the root and the stem. Like I said, it's what you find in the market, so you should know that it should be in the root and the stem. That's that central, that central hard woody stuff that you find within the, the tree. That is the xylem. What is the structure? The xylem consists of several cells, which are the tracheids, the vessels, the xylem fiber, and the xylem parenchyma. We've discussed parenchyma earlier, and they have the same function. We've also discussed um, fibers. Fibers have the same function the fibers of sclerenchyma have. is the same function the fiber in xylem have. And what is the function of xylem? Major function is support. It also gives strength and shape to the plant and then it, con it helps in conducting materials, especially liquid materials like water and salt through the plant. It's a conducting tissue. Then finally we are going to deal with phloem. Now phloem is present in almost all the other tissues. And one of the reasons why it's present in all the other tissues because it, pro it provides support and helps in transporting food materials. That's produced man and manufactured food. It helps in transporting it from the leaves to other parts of the tree. Now, where is phloem located? It's located in the vascular bundles. Like I've said, the vascular bundles, like the xylem and even the sclerenchyma. What is the structure of the phloem? It contains some some cells like the sieve tube, the phloem parenchyma, the phloem fiber, and some companion cells. And like I said, it conducts manufactured food from the, from the leaf to other parts of the plant. And then it also provides support. It helps in, so in it joins the other tissues in providing support for the plant. And with this, we've come to the end of the lesson. Let us treat some past questions concerning the topic. Now, here are some objective questions for us to consider. The first one says, the exoskeleton is a characteristic feature of A. Amoeba, B. Etron, C. Hydra, D. Millipede. And the answer is millipede. We are told that um, millipede uses the exoskeleton chitin because it is one of the arthropods. Not that. Second question. The exoskeleton found in insects is made of 
A. Cartilage B. Chitin C. Melanin and D. Mucilage Of course, the answer is Chitin Chitin is the skeleton found on insects Third, which of the following vertebra which of the following vertebra provide articulating surface for the ribs? A. Thoracic B. Lumbar C. Cervical and D. Sacral The answer is thoracic vertebra The bones, the ribs are joined to the thoracic vertebra which is the vertebral column of the chest region Number 4 Which of the following cells cannot be found in xylem tissue? A. Vessels B. Tracheids C. Wood fiber and D. Sieve tubes The answer is sieve tube Sieve tubes are found in the phloem tissue Which of the following plant parts does not perform supportive functions? Or give some options A. Parenchyma, xylem and cholenchyma B. Epidermis, sclerenchyma and xylem C. Parenchyma, cholenchyma and sclerenchyma and D. Sclerenchyma, xylem and cholenchyma The answer is B. Epidermis, sclerenchyma and xylem That epidermis is the odd one out The rest are supportive tissue The epidermis is found on the outer skin of animals and with that we've come to the end of the topic tissues and supporting systems in plants and animals see you